Currently, we are globally facing various crises – geopolitical, economic, social, environmental. Certainly, periods of upheaval are no novelty in history, nor is the insight that life is precarious original. Still, what seems to be new, or what we at least become more and more aware of, these crises are not chasing one the other, as one might think. Rather, they are intermingled. In junction with these intertwined crises comes a fact which makes the situation even more serious. Alongside these manifestations of crisis goes a crisis of representation of these crises. Controversy and a general atmosphere of fear and uncertainty are on the rise. What seems to be steadfast facts is shattered, and documentary's truth claim is further up to debate. Though I am far from presenting one easy solution, I would nonetheless tempt to envision some possible ways out of, or rather right through this double crisis. Taking the double nature of crisis, I would like to invite you to think with me particularly through the entanglement with regard to the images of ecology and at the same time ecologies of images, and to embrace these complex entanglements by means of multimodal ecoliteracy forms of self-reflexive mindfulness and creative self-expression through visual poetry, a placed interaction in the specific affordances of mobile media making and media practices, of participation, co-creation, which catalyzes the transformative potential of collaborative media making. In order not to get lost in these complex entanglements, some guiding questions can be helpful, such as is there anything in between, maybe even beyond paralyzing ecotopia? Is there anything in between, maybe even beyond paralyzing ecodystopian or, on the other hand, naive ecoutopian narratives? How can one communally raise awareness of imminent ecological risk and at the same time co-creatively awaken a desire for a more sustainable world? And how can one encourage multilogue to effectively and cognitively embrace complexity and to instigate transformation? Or, to sum this all up, is there a way to promote negotiation and understanding of environmental topics through documentary practices in times of disruption and uncertainty, when risk is imminent but often invisible, when the fundamental transformation is vital but when at the same time complexity of matters and controversy of positions thwart responsible action taking. The general assumption underlying my approach to these questions is that IDOCs bear the potential to face both crises, the crisis of representation and the entangled socio-political, mental and ecological crisis. They are able to bring forth transformative images of ecology and ecologies of images. And it is especially those configurations, thus, which are based on emplaced interaction and mindfulness, network networking, and polyphony and multi-perspective thinking. Their openness, I will claim, does not only do justice to complexity, but it also teaches us to listen and to take a viewpoint as an inspiration and not an explanation. Foremost, however, they enable us to imagine change, open our minds for transformation and assume agency, individually as well as a society. However, as time is scarce, let me jump right into the topic and fuel our think tank with some impulses. Let us zoom in first into Guattari's Ecosophy, to then zoom out again for gaining a glimpse at the bigger picture and the connections between IDOCs multi-perspective thinking and how they relate to Guattari's reflections. Guattari claims that traditional environmentalist perspectives obscure the messy entanglements of relationships between humans and the natural environment through the maintenance of the dualistic separation of human, cultural and non-human natural systems. To bridge this artificial gap, he envisions ecosophy as a new field of philosophy and research, 
postulating a pluralistic, multi-perspective approach to such an endeavor. In one of his seminal writings, in this context, The Three Ecologies, Guattari suggests that life is constituted by three distinguishable but corresponding ecologies – the environmental, the social and the mental. The first two, the environmental and the social, seem to be fairly straightforward. The first refers to the material world, or what is usually understood by natural environment, or the observable. The second, the social, comprises the realm of intersubjectivity, the cultural and the world inhabited by us, as experiencing subjects in interaction with one another. The third ecology is less easily accessible than the first two ones. Following Iberkiv in his reading of Guattari, it can be described as an intermediary register between the first two. The idea of a mental ecology is intended to suggest that we humans are embodied agents and interpreters of a world that is not only there to be perceived, but also perceive and communicative in its nature. Perception or mind, understood as the sense and world-making capacity, intrinsic to all experience, is the interactive dimension through which a world comes into being, for world-bearing beings. At this point, at the latest, interactive media and practices of mediation come into play, and with them the diagnosed crisis of representation, which creates a world without accountability and responsibilities for current issues. Speaking from the position of a philosopher and psychoanalyst, Guattari diagnoses we cover our eyes, we forbid ourselves to think about the turbulent passage of our times, which swiftly thrust far behind us our familiar past, which effaces ways of being and living that are still fresh in our minds, and which slaps our future onto an opaque horizon, heavy with thick clouds and miasmas. Humanity seems to have lost its head, or, more precisely, its head is no longer functioning with its body. How can it find a compass by which to reorient itself within a modernity whose complexity overwhelms it? In Remaking Social Practices, Guattari thus advocates for the invention of new collective assemblages of enunciation to reconnect the head to the body, to join science and technology with human values and to agree upon common projects while respecting the singularity of individual positions. Because, underlying again the interdependence of all spheres of life, without a change in mentalities, without entry into a post-media era, there can be no enduring hold over the environment. Yet, without modifications to the social and material environment, there can be no change in mentalities. This finally leads Gortari to postulate the necessity of founding an ecosophy that would link environmental ecology to social ecology and to mental ecology, and to call for a new ethico-aesthetic paradigm. Though interactive network media were just emerging when Guattari postulated the curation of post-mass media, his vision touches upon several affordances which today's media potentially afford, whereby emphasis needs to be put on potentially. In the following, options for the actual realization of these will be outlined, taking a project, which is still work in progress, as a touchstone for probing into the potential of interactive documentary assemblages, to think through complex entanglements of all three ecologies. To transcend dualisms such as nature versus culture, individual versus community, mental versus physical, local versus global, and many others, in favor of perceiving of all life as commons and interdependently attached to one another. Foremost, however, it will be sketched how such configurations are apt to stimulate change of attitude and, in consequence, behavior in terms of meaningful individual as well as societal engagement. Mind the Gap is a many-year practice-led artistic research project 
and aims to face both crises in the societal and environmental ecologies and the challenges we are facing with regard to the mental perceptual ecology, which means the crisis of representation. Within a transdisciplinary team, eco-artists, educators, researchers on biodiversity and media scholars are experimenting with mobile media making and co-creative visual poetry in order to raise awareness of the imminent invisible gap, the loss of biodiversity and species extinction around us, as well as the loss of individual and societal attachment to our natural environment and to one another. In Mind the Gap, participants are invited to use their smartphones to create visual haikus while mindfully wandering in nature. Analog to the literary haiku, which is based on three lines of poetic reflection, these visual haikus are made up of three images, or short videos, about 15 seconds. These small series of creative self-reflection are uploaded in a social media network group. Thus, we hope to get a growing collection of visual impressions, shortest forms of mobimentaries, which will serve several functions. First of all, they document what we are currently running into danger of losing, and that the loss of biodiversity concerns us all, even in our daily lives. This goes hand in hand with inspiring students to use their smartphones for attentive, embodied self-expression, and to raising their voice. Because, secondly, this project is designed as a creative strategy to cope with a situation which either usually remains abstract and far away, or which is overwhelming and often causes resignation. And thirdly, including digital networks, it is meant as a point of departure to stimulate exchange on the experience of ecological crisis and to form a community of concern for further action taking. Hence, in this project, we are somehow trying to square the circle, appropriating mobile media making within an experiential experiment situated at the intersection of more than one disciplinary field and within all three ecologies. Though all elements are interdependently interwined, let's try to move the analytic lens from one aspect to the next. Let us maybe start with the element that is at the same time the easiest to grasp, as it manifests in concrete visual output, but which at the same time, if one looks closely, is highly evasive. The visual haiku and the concept that stands behind it, the self-reflexive, mindful, creative self-expression by means of visual poetry. Haikus have been used in the Zen tradition as a practice for mindfulness. Originally, in the Japan tradition, haikus are short poems containing 17 syllables in a three-line 5-7-5 syllable pattern. Recently, the concept of the haiku has been translated into other forms of creative expression, especially into the form of the visual haiku, in which three images or short video sequences replace the three-lined literary poem. Most often, the focal element of a haiku is the contemplation of nature, one of the reasons why this form has been chosen for the project Mind the Gap. However, restricting haikus to being nature poems would be much too short. Rather, they are complex, creative, phenomenological renderings that reflect outer and inner states of being in their interdependence. They are subjective reflections of the outer world, poetic documents of existence, as they are affective expressions of human emotions, stimulated by an attentive shift of one's attention to the sensory experience of phenomena in a deeply entangled world, which, again, relates to Guattari's three entangled ecologies. Moreover, making a haiku not only sharpens one's senses and unveils what before might have gone unnoticed. It also reveals transformations in one's surroundings and it might make one aware of what we are already missing, thus heightening an emotionally engaged but unexcited alertness. 
it potentially creates a state of mind in which the otherwise often experienced powerlessness and hence hopelessness can be overcome through a creative act. An act which, as we will see in a minute, gets amplified due to the specific affordances of networked media and the ethics of co-creative intervention. Let us thus shift our analytic lens to the second element of these considerations. Mobile media making with its specific affordances. As Schleser, Baker and Mologa have pointed out, there are four prominent characteristics in the creative use of mobile media firms. First of all, we have the innate performativity or movement, the gestural qualities of the device. Secondly, the portability factor, watching, shooting anywhere, and which makes the mundane interesting. Third, there is viewing the world through the camera. And last but not least, it is intimacy, expressivity of the device and the predilection for close-ups. In this context, I would like to add a fifth aspect. In general, when speaking of mobile media, we are not only thinking of portable media, but media that are most often also networked media. This networked capacity affords networking, sharing and going public. And given the opportunities of social media, mobile media makers can reach out, they can connect. Moreover, the embodied and emplaced act of creation, the doing, the performative dimension of the use of the mobile phone are emphasized. Most often, the emerging works are imbued with a unique style and voice, whereby voice can be understood in its double sense, linking it to the concept of voice in documentary theory, which is closely related to the engagement and the impetus to raise one's voice. After having already shortly touched upon the networked networking capacity of mobile media, I would like to come back to the fact that mobile media making is part of a media ecology that is becoming more and more participatory. It is this collaborative, co-creative, participatory dimension which plays an essential role in Mind the Gap, as participants are not only invited to process and express their perception and emotions in visual poetry, but they also are invited to share their reflections, to enter into a dialogue and to develop together, co-creatively, coping strategies which lead to an empowerment. Hence, connectivity goes beyond the technological and includes in this reading both interhuman interaction, which means the relationships in the social ecology, and an attachment to the non-human world, which means what Guattari has in mind when speaking of environmental ecology. Still, Mind the Gap tries to avoid falling into the trap of harmonic holism. Rather, co-creation and expressivity are situated in polyphonic assemblages. In these configurations, which embrace complexity and the entanglement of all three ecologies, it becomes possible to listen in a responsive way, which means to learn to take a viewpoint as an inspiration and not an explanation. Hence, co-creation and polyphony do not only lead to multiperspectivity, they are also open for dissensus, as well as negotiation and mutual learning. As such, they are imbued with a political and an aesthetical ethical power, or as Guattari describes it, ecosophic democracy would not give itself up to the facility of consensual agreement. It will invest itself in a dissensual metamoralization. With it, responsibility emerges from the self in order to pass to the other. At this point, with the convergence of concepts of mindfulness and creativity, more by network media making and the ethics, poetics and politics of polyphony, also concepts of new media literacy and the sense of creative in the sense of creative expressivity and eco-literacy merge. Hereby, however, literacies or rather expressivity are more than only reading and writing competences, ICTS skills or factual knowledge. Rather, they are eco-media literacy. They are multimodal literacies, which comprise the study of effect, 
medium, environmental political economy, system thinking, ecology and alternative media. These literacies are prerequisite for what Guattari had probably in mind when calling for the invention of new collective assemblages of enunciation, and what he was thinking of when developing his vision of a new ethico-aesthetic paradigm, a paradigm which is imbued with the creation of ethic value rather than merely meaning-making, and which leads to the imperative to negotiate the present in the name of the future. This, and here we have come full circle, is in fact nothing else than a venture to face the initially sketched crisis of representation in the representation of crises, and which lives up to the entanglements of images of ecology and ecologies of images.